bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Kentucky Derby Prep Recap. I'm Dan Ullman, along with Mike Beer. In this edition, we'll take a peek back at the Jerome Stakes, a one-turn mile at Aqueduct over a good racetrack. We break from the gate, and we expected some speed from Andiamo a Firenze. We expected some speed from Arctic Arrogance. But when none of those horses took the bull by the horns, Mike, Dylan Davis aboard the number four Lugan Knight decided, hey, this pace isn't very sharp. I'm stretching out in distance. I'm going to go to the front. Yeah, exactly, Dan. And, and Lugan Knight didn't even break that sharply from the gate here. He was out uh, out broke by a couple of his rivals, but um, with nobody else going, you can see the five there, uh, the rider on Andiamo Alferenze, Carmouche, just had no intention of going with that horse who broke on top. He wrangled that horse off the pace. Um, it allowed Davis to sort of take control of this race. Now, he does have the, the heavy favorite just setting up shop to his outside, um, these two horses are going to throw it down through the stretch, Dan, and Luga Knight just not going to relent. These horses just ran one, two all the way around the track. The opening quarter was moderate. The half you see relatively slow, 47 and three. But Arctic Arrogance, who is coming into this race, turning back in distance off a second in the Remsen going nine furlongs, looks to be traveling comfortably. There was just no excuse. He was just out gamed on this day. Yeah, sort of a similar um, experience that he that he went through in the Remsen, I think, Dan. Um, he ran fine in the Remsen. He runs fine here, but he has every chance to win both of those races or at least one of them, and he doesn't win either, Dan. He's right here. He's bearing down on Lugan Knight all through the stretch, and I guess you can give some credit to the winner, Dan. He's just not going to let Arctic Arrogance get by him here, and uh, Arctic Arrogance is going to have to settle for second best again. The winner was very professional. He stayed to his task. He was very game. He's slowly getting away from Arctic Arrogance, nearing the wire. It was a good performance for Lugan Knight, who was stretching out to a mile for the first time. His connections are not sure how f much further he's going to go. We'll talk a little bit more about him next. Arctic Arrogance, Linda Rice said after the race that they're thinking maybe of putting blinkers on Arctic Arrogance. Maybe we, it'll get this horse more focused down the road certainly could sharpen his speed and they'll probably stretch him out for the withers i believe is at a mile and an eighth this year yeah i mean you based on his race in the remsen where he earns an 89 buyer and finished second in a grade two you could certainly you know give this horse another chance going longer i think most of us you and i included sort of felt like cutting back to the one turn mile might help him here dan as it turns out it really didn't i mean i think he ran to a similar level of his prior two starts which were both good performances in Stace Company, but, you know, once again, he just could not get by through the stretch and he had to settle for second. And, you know, perhaps, luckily for him, there wasn't really anybody doing anything behind him. Some handicappers are going to look at this chart, see that the top two finishers raced one, two all the way around the track, and they'll be tempted to maybe give some of the closers a little bit of an upgrade, whether it's General Banker, the New York bred, who sort of finished an even third, or the lightly raced Neural Network, who tried to come from way out of it and finished fourth. Uh, your thoughts on those two? Uh, I thought General Banker um, ran fine in here. He didn't have, you know, a super big excuse. I didn't think. He was rated, though up the back stretch they you know were content to sit off the pace he was always in a three or four wide trip around the track here and, and i thought he ran you know about as well as he could run dan he just really wasn't able to threaten the one two finishes in here and i don't think he had some kind of big excuse in this race neural network you know listen it's only his second career start you know personally i thought he was a little disappointed in here but he was last early he tried to swing around to the outside he was never a factor in this race and as for Andiamo a Firenze, perhaps they decided to rate him because they were concerned about this distance. He might be better going shorter. I think he's going to need not only a turn back in distance, but a drop in class. I think he can be an effective New York bred sprinter for the remainder of the year. I agree with that. Um, you know, it's it's just always interesting to see connections, you know, sort of play it that way, Dan. When, if you're worried, I guess you would have just have to assume they were worried about the mile with him, and that's why they didn't get aggressive and try to go to the lead in here. Um, I'm just always left wondering how they think that's going to work for a horse like him. He's at his best when they let him use his speed and uh, they took it away from him here. 
Let's take a closer look at the winner, Lugan Knight, who earned his second lifetime win from four starts. He's never been off the board, and he earned a career-best 85 buyer speed figure. Preakness winning conditioner Michael Make McCarthy believes that this horse right now is going to be a miler. His next race will probably be the Gotham. If all goes well there, then they'll stretch him out. If you look at his pedigree, his sire was certainly a strong miler, golden sense, but there is a little bit of distance on the bottom. The dam's a half-sister to Cafe Americano, who is a graded stakes winner going a mile and an eighth on the turf. She's also a half to a grade three stakes placed synthetic router at a mile and a quarter, so it's not impossible. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, I, you just with this horse, just based on the way he's progressing from start to start, at least right now, and he handled the mile fine here, seemingly, Dan. I mean, I guess you just got to take the next step and, and let him tell you how far he wants to go. There's, there is, as you've already pointed out, there is a little bit of pedigree, not only to go along, but there's some class in this family. A second dam was a really good horse. She was a sprinter, but she was a really good horse. Roxy Gap was her name, grade two stakes winner, sprinting on synthetic. The BG Stables homebred Lugan Knight, again, an 85 buyer speed figure. Let's take a look at the prices for the Jerome. Lugan Knight returned $9.10 as the third choice in this race. Quick question about Arctic Arrogance, Mike. We've seen him run well in his last two races. Do you think that's the best he can do? Do you think Linda can sort of get another, squeeze another length or two out of Arctic Arrogance, maybe with Blink? or has he kind of been exposed now? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say he's been exposed. I mean, it, it's, it has to be a little concerning that he's a horse who's now um, been in a couple of stretch battles and hasn't been able to, you know, to steal the deal either time. I mean, that could be something that you worry about. I think this horse has a pretty good amount of ability though, Dan. Um, and, and we'll just see where he winds up. Would I say that we've seen, you know, his best race already? I, I'd be very reluctant to say that. Lugan Knight, again, takes the Jerome, 85 buyer speed figure. Michael McCarthy, Dylan Davis, will likely see him next at a one-turn mile at Aqueduct in the Gotham.